right now, I want to welcome KJ from the Great Value Show. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> what's up? What's up? What's up? How we doing? How we doing, Alex? We good? Yeah. How we doing? We good? Good. All right, all right. How many people in here watch the Oscars? I mean, like, the whole entire Oscars. No. See, because black people don't watch the Oscars. I watched the Oscars because um, I knew Will Smith was going to win. I watched the movie, King Richard. I cried. It was nice. Feel me? But I, at the, I, I saw this nigga Will Smith turn into Mike Larry from Bad Boys and Muhammad Ali at the same time. <laughs> this nigga Will, Mike Larry woke all the way up to Chris Rock, and Muhammad Ali smacked the shit out of him. He smacked the shit out of Chris Rock. Chris Rock said he smacked the shit out of him. He said, oh, shit. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. You can tell he was hurt because this nigga Chris Rock's eyes was watering and shit. He smacked him so hard he couldn't even finish the nominees. Chris Rock was out there like, and the nominees are. <laughs> Just rolled the damn thing. <laughs> I was, I was, it was two days before April Fool's, so I was hoping they would wake up on that Friday and be like, April Fool's, bitch. That's how I think everybody says April Fool's in my head. No specific reason why, no impressions either. You know who's undefeated in April Fool's jokes? Or who think they undefeated? Nah, nah, females. Because since I was in middle school, bitches been telling the same April Fool's jokes since I was like mad young. Talking about, I've been holding this in for my entire life. This little bundle of joy. Growing inside of me and have the nerve to post a sonogram on, on Instagram and shit. In middle school, that's the crazy part. <laughs> High school, maybe. Middle school, mm. Middle school thinks that think a nigga would think they hold hands and he might accidentally got a bitch pregnant. Who knows? <laughs> Any BBWs in the house tonight? No BBWs? No big girls? No big girls in the house tonight? <laughs> All right, baby. <laughs> I think every heavy set person have same qualities in my mind. Feel me? Like my dad, he's a heavy set nigga, so you know. And like when he sleep, that nigga be knocked for real. He be like, mm. I'm like, what the fuck is that? I don't know. Heavy people got the most abnormal snores in the world. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with them. But it was one this one time I was messing with this BBW girl, right? We cuddling and shit. Obviously, I'm the little spoon, because, you know, she's big. And I'm being held. I'm in a good sleep. So I'm dreaming real good. And next thing I hear is a I wake up, and I'm like, Dad? The fuck is that? Oh, bitch, that's you. I'm over here thinking my dad is in the house, but no, it's just a bitch. Abnormally snoring. <laughs> but me and this BBW, we was messing for each other. It was around this time last year, right? We was going on for about three months ago. The first month, this bitch was already falling in love, giving me mad red flags already. So many red flags, you know, I thought I wanted to work. You feel me? I was giving her back yellow flags. I'm like, bitch, you're falling in love. Slow down. Yellow flag, right? I knew it ended up being toxic. I knew it was toxic one time, because I told her, you do you, I do me. And when we're together, that's it. It's our time. That was the deal. But along the way, she must have forgot. Because every time we get into something, she'd be like, I want a relationship, but I don't want a relationship. It became toxic. It came so toxic, it was one time she told me she almost stabbed the nigga. I said, oh, that shit's sexy. I like that. But no, it wasn't toxic. Until it was one night, I finally had it. No more red flags. I was done for it. It was one night she invited me out, but the night before, she, she almost got me shot. She had a nigga put a gun in my face, so I was like, all right. But then she invited me out the night after. You would have thought that would have been the end of it if she, you know, gun in my face. But I'm like, no, it's all right. I'm going to make it up. She said, I want to make it up to you, you know? This is another IG comedian, another content creator party. We're going to go out, you know? I said, I can't. I'm pop, you know? I mean, unemployment, pandemic. She said, it's okay. I got you, I'm gonna give you the money. You go get a rentie, you go get bottles. I'm like, what? All right. So I go get the rentie, right? I pick her up, I pick up another IG comedian. So we go to this party. 
party is lit. We having a fun time. Party over. They said, yo, part two at this other spot. So I drive them. Everybody's drunk now. We go to the second part. By the time I get there, fine parking, this bitch is drunk. She told me, other homie, go, y'all go ahead. I catch up. I'm like, word? Looked at homie, said, word? So we out. I walked in this spot five minutes. I'm like, where the hookah at? I see hookah everywhere. I text this bitch. Yo, they got hookah because she, she's the benefactor tonight. She said she got me. Um, come inside. They got hookah right now. Come, come. No reply. I FaceTime the bitch. I said, hey. No answer. So I go outside. I walk outside to the park car. I say, oh, this bitch is in the car sleeping. And I know she's in a deep sleep because she's like. So I said, I'm going to leave the bitch alone. Let her sleep, you know? I walk back inside the spot. Literally step back inside. <laughs> I get a call from the bitch. Why would you leave me outside the car by myself? You know I like to be left by myself. I'm like, oh, shit. Here we go. Another toxic night. So I walk back outside. I come get the bitch. She said, why would you leave me outside? You know you want to go inside and follow them skinny black bitches. I'm like, it's not even like that. They had hookah. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, <laughs> I love hookah. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking, if you fall and pass out, who the fuck's going to pick your big ass up? Not me. I'm only strong during sex. <laughs> so I go inside. She gives me attitude the whole entire night. Not even speak to me. Not a word until it's time to go. I ask her, the host is now collecting $20 for the bottles and the hookah, so you going to give me $20 again? She goes like, no. You better go figure out your damn self. I say, what? OK. In my head, I'm a Gemini, so I have like these little conversations to myself. I say, yo, KJ. Yes, KJ. Do you have a straw? Why, KJ? Because that was the last one. I was done. So I hit up all my mans. Somebody cash at me $20. I gave it to the host. Now it's time to go. It's pouring, raining outside. I'm taking these two drunk dumbasses back home. So now I'm driving. I'm driving. This bitch sitting next to me. KJ, you mad at me? Not saying a damn word. I'm driving. KJ, you're not going to talk to me. Yes? Nope. I'm driving. Because she didn't understand the fact that I was mad. And then she got mad at me for being mad at her. So it turned into a whole thing. I'm still driving, not saying a word. This bitch not putting on her seatbelt. So you're going to put your seatbelt on? No. I am using my phone as GPS. She takes my phone off of the GPS. And now I don't know where I'm going. We're all the way in Brooklyn. I got to drive all the way back to the Bronx. I, find, I pull the car over. It's raining. You're not wearing a seatbelt. I find parking. So this next part, I want you guys to know, I do not believe in domestic violence. I do not hit women. Anybody in here saw the movie Soul Food? You know, Soul Food? Black people. Y'all never seen the movie Soul Food? God damn. All right. Remember that one scene when Makai Pfeiffer walked in the nail salon, slams the door, the glass breaks. He takes me along to the back. You know, everybody in the salon think he's beating the bitch, but you know, he's He's aggressively having a conversation with Nia Long. That's what sort of what happened next. So I parked the car. I got out the car. I walked to the passenger side. I opened her door and said, can you please step out the car? She said, what, KJ? What do you want? I said, I just want to talk to you right quick. So she steps out the car. The bitch, who's over here sonic in this shit? Over here collecting rings. You good? <laughs> All right. So I pull her out the car, right? We're talking. I'm trying to calm her down. I said, what, KJ? What do you want? I said, hey, can you stop yelling? You calm it down. You die. I'm, I'm trying to get us home. She said, no, no. So you know, I don't, I don't, I don't handle yelling and, and, the, and the pointing in my face with her. So I'm a Kai fight for her. I said, listen, bitch, you're not going to be doing this shit all fucking night. I, and this this what happened next. She, she two-pieced my shit. She had rings on her. She said, mock me. I said, oh. This bitch hit me so hard, I got a cut in my forehead. Now I'm bleeding. It's raining. I can't even see, you know, and she's standing here like, fuck you, KJ. Always want to follow these skinny black bitches. All I ever want to do is for you to love me. I said, oh, that's what this is about. And I thought to myself, hey, what today is? Oh, I said, I love you too. She said, really? I said, no, bitch, April Fools. <laughs> That's all I got for y'all. My name is KJ.